No, you have a steering wheel. You have a car right there. You have a part of the car there. I want to welcome you back for episode number two with Alberta and Harold. We're here in Linwood, Kansas, working on a 32-year-old missing persons case. And not just any missing person. This is your son. This is Randy Leach, who went missing 32 years ago after a graduation party. And we spent yesterday, and let's just kind of bring you into a recap as to what we did with that search yesterday. And if you've not seen yesterday's episode, that's really where you would you know, really want to start. We have a link in the description below. But for those of you that uh, need a quick recap, we came in, we did an entire search of Stranger Creek in several locations. We did a search in the Kansas River. And with that one, we also tried to get over to 142nd, which we've not yet made it over there. But I think that with today, I think we want to talk to, you know, you and, you know, and the viewers and let them know, let's kind of go back to the beginning today and bring everybody up to speed from your side as to that morning that you realized that Randy was missing. Will that be okay with you? Sure. Okay. This is one episode you're not going to want to miss. We woke up on the morning of April the 16th, 1988, and Randy was not home. He had been out to the graduation party the night before, and we ended up out on the driveway in our bare feet looking and wondering, where is he? Because this was unusual for him. He never stayed out. We were very upset. We called my brother. He was a policeman in Lawrence, and he came down and went over to where the party was and talked to them, and then he came back, didn't get much satisfaction, and we went over to talk to the people, which I had never met. They were just new in the area. I talked, went into the house and talked to the mother and asked her, she said, what can I do for you? And I said, I want my son, Randy Leach. And she said, well, he's not here. Mrs. Leach, can I get you a beer? No, ma'am, I wanna know where my son is. So then they started telling us, well, they thought he took this one home or they thought somebody had taken him home. So we took off and went to a couple of the kids' houses. They knew Randy was messed up, but they didn't know where he was. So we came back home and we had family coming in from all over, friends, and they went out and walked the area over where the party was. We could not report this until Sunday night, which was the 17th, and uh, was our first initial report on the case. And from then on, it was just pandemonium. We were in and out. Harold and a bunch of the people would go hunting, looking, driving. One story after the other started coming in. Some of the kids would come over and tell us a different story or call us on the phone. And every time we got a story, we would call Leavenworth and tell them these stories. I'd write it down and call them. We didn't have much luck. We knew right off the bat that they just didn't really seem to be getting with it. So within two weeks, we had contacted some private detectives and uh, they came out and started checking around. KBI, they said they weren't working on the case. Well, we found out later KBI was investigating our investigators because he was in over the line and didn't have a license, they didn't think. So that went on for a month and we still didn't think they were doing any work for us. You know, with our search yesterday, you know, we're sensing if this is not an accident, there's a lot of corruption within this city and within the county and that we might be dealing with a cover-up. Let's dig in deeper into a couple of things that we heard yesterday. Randy parked your, your car in somebody else's driveway, not at the party, but across the street at somebody's driveway. Is this Flanagan's right. property? Right. right. Okay. And, and so Flanagan, to bring everybody up to speed, is from what we've heard, has been known to be you know, in the drug scene. And that one of the rumors is that Randy ended up going in there that night and having a confrontation flipping over a table that had drugs on it and kind of upset somebody. And that now leads to 
other rumors of you know, Randy may have ended up in the trunk of a car and that he may have ended up across the border in Missouri in the shredder and there's so many stories that you know we've heard that you've right. heard over the years right. but I'd like to kind of talk more about Flanagan right now because I know that you've had some conversations with him but Flanagan right now is actually in jail because he murdered his girlfriend yeah. a couple years ago or a yeah. year ago two years ago two. The, the two. newspaper interviewed him and they published part of this that said I did it out of a fit of rage the last time this happened was 30 years ago. That I yeah. didn't kill anybody. That I didn't kill anybody. Yeah. Oh, wow. exactly. Which was 30 years to, to, the, so, to the day wow. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. of Randy missing with this confrontation that may have, you know, the rumors of confrontation right. taking place. Yes. Yeah. We went to the jail. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got him on the computer and he was on the phone and we could see him uh -huh. in the jail. But he said he didn't have anything to do with it. If I ever find out anything, I'll sure let you know. He said it was two years before they ever talked to him. Right. But, and he lived next door. Yeah, and, and I'm hollering, we, you need to talk to Flanagan, you know. Nobody ever talked to him. If they did something to Randy, they would have to be nervous and do something quick. But if it was like a drug dealer or something, if Randy had passed, away, they could have left him in the car along the road. And it was, no, he overdosed. Right. So our feeling was that it was more inside if it was an accident, and they got nervous. Because this is at, four, you know, 2.30, between 2.30 and 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. Is when this happened, the car was missing the next morning. So, yeah. so we're really dealing with a two to three hour window, yeah. while it's dark as to what happened to Randy in, in your car. Right. It, with that, you know, we never want to think bad of anybody. You know, we want to treat right. this as a, you know, accident to begin with. Knowing that, you know, Randy didn't normally do drugs, it sounds like you had a very open relationship with him. Like, hey, we understand that you're in high school and you're going to do some, some right. of these things and that right. you communicated those. Either he chose that night to go further down the rabbit hole or you know, something was spiked and it took him right. down a path that he wasn't even expecting. Right. And with that, I think, you know, a few things that interest me. One is, you know, we cleared every route coming back to the house as far as the creeks go. Yeah. What we've not cleared, we've not cleared, you know, the pond in the backyard at the party. That interests me. Has that ever been cleared? Not that I, I know of. I think so, but... Uh, and, and, and I guess was was there a fence up during that time as well? Like, Probably. So I, I mean, know. if there was a fence and the fence was not you know down, he would have never made it through there. So that's one thing that we'd like to talk to the property owner about today. We need to start at the party and start working out from there. And I know that the property owners you know said pretty much said please don't come back. Yeah. We're gonna head over there and see what we can do to talk our way onto the property. Okay. And see what we can do to you know clear that from a sonar and from a diver perspective all of those ponds in the area for you. So there's five or six up there, so it's gonna keep us busy for, you know, on into the early afternoon. Okay. And we'll keep you uh, updated for sure. Okay. And we're gonna get out there and we're gonna cover a lot of territory for you today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. but nobody's answering the door. They do have a camera at the front door, so if it has a microphone, I did hold up my phone with the phone number on there, but just in case their security system is not working, I'm leaving a note for them as well to give me a call. All right, on that note, right across the road is Flanagan's old property. Flanagan no longer lives here, so we're at this property now. Yeah. Since we're here, let's clear whatever we can.
I have a really hard time thinking that this property up here would have been a part of it. Whether you, you would have had to go through this house property or through this property in order to dump a car into this pond back here. Okay. In fact, Dan, are you able to, let's bring up the map of this. Were both of these homes there back in 91? Both of them. So both of those were not there. Yeah, there's no houses. That's the only house that's there. Okay, so go back to today's image. And so we have this road that anybody could have driven in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's because, check. Yeah, because they know their house was not there at the time. It was a dirt road. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this person preferably. Yeah, yeah, let's go to that one. It was Bill, right? Right. Appreciate you uh, letting us come yeah. onto your property. Yeah. Uh, have you met Larry before? I've been here before with the cadaver dogs. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. 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 yeah so I, you said that at the time, you know, cadaver dogs did not hit on it. I, but they did tell me we have a cemetery right up here, and they said they would get the drift off of that cemetery yes. if those dogs. I I never dreamed that. I feel so bad for them being their only child and having that happen and not knowing. Yeah. yeah. All of this not knowing. Yeah. I mean, that's it's terrible to begin with. And I talked to Dan Flanagan, who lived in the uh, lived in the trailer there out in front. Uh -huh. And Dan said Randy parked his car in his driveway that night. And he said when the time came for him to investigate, Dan was a dumpster diver. He had all kinds of junk in his yard and old cars and stuff. He said they never did ever come in and inspect his yard and look for any problem, look for anything in his yard of all the places. What, what, what do you feel about his statement that was in the paper? A which, couple, was, which was Dan's that? Flan, Flanagan, so you know, after he killed his girlfriend, yeah. and he made the statement in the paper, like this happened during a fit of rage, and the last time this happened was 30 years ago, which would have been the time that Randy was I missing. couldn't tell you because like I say, he, he was in the drugs off and on most of his life, uh, from apparently from what uh, I only knew him from the time we moved out here, which like I say is 20 some years ago and we put this place in and I got to know him and Dan come down and he, he was a good neighbor to talk to. He had all kinds of ideas about stuff. He could do things and he's smart and he helped a couple other people out. So I, I really else. never ever thought Dan possibly did it. I just never entered my yeah. head. but. Well, if he, if he, he did, it, if he yeah. did or he didn't do it, it seems like they would start the last place his vehicle was seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. And that's yeah. Kind of, makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. basic. You start the last yeah. place it was seen. And start so, there. Anyway, that, that's why we're here today. You know, we're just uh, process of elimination look, for look the pond. Up, so. I, I want, I would love for somebody to find out what happened. Yeah. Uh, at least so they have to know no. what happened to him yeah. and yes, if it was possible, maybe locate his DNA. I thought Larry would have already had this loaded for us in the water. But. Come on, Larry. I guess we're going to have to find somebody that can do a better job than Larry. Water looks pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larry, for bringing it down for us. Yeah, I think it's super weird, like I was saying up there, that they didn't search Flanagan's property to begin with. Just because, I'm not, not saying that Flanagan did it, but that was just the last place that his vehicle was seen. Um, you know, just, I, mean, I think that's wild that you know, they didn't even look there. It makes you, me wonder if they didn't look because maybe they already knew. Like, or, you're, you're leaning towards cover up. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, I mean, just, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. I mean, I could be 100% wrong, but you know, this, this is the vibe that I'm getting. We're usually 100% of the time wrong. I mean, realistically, I think we're batting, I think we're getting about, you know, 20%, you know, but at least we're out here searching and, you know, we're marking off ponds and we're marking off locations. Uh, even if we don't find, you know, Randy or anyone else for that matter, we're definitely allowing the search to be tightened, you know, we're, we're, we're tightening, our, you know, that gap or where we could be. And also, you know, bringing other people into this. You know, this really is a uh, an open source search. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, no. As we're bringing awareness to it. Yeah, we're bringing awareness to this case that's open and, you know, other people can jump in and help the search, you know, so. And last pass up the uh, middle here. 
Sam, that one clears this entire pond, so. Yep. More answers, more questions. Just gonna go say thanks to Bill. Oh, he's right here. No, not that your pond is clear. Well, that's what that's so. the I had feeling it was, but then not knowing you. Yeah. Cause like I say, kids swam in that thing and we fished. And where, where are you going? You got someplace else to go now? Or? Yeah, we got the uh, pond down on the uh, on 32, or Golden or whatever that is down there. Straight south of here. Uh huh. Yeah. To the east, yeah, just a little yeah. bit. You have a bigger pond there. Up, up, up behind the pig farm. Uh, I'm not sure what the pig farm yeah, is. Yeah, well, that big long building there. Yep. There's yeah, that used to be pig farm. Yeah. Uh, so just, just to clarify, whose house got burned down? Dan's? The house that the leeches were having the part went to the leech went to the party. Oh, the, the, that house got burned yeah, down. Okay. Yeah, where they had the party. I think that they. I think if, if I'm remembering right, and I may be wrong, uh, I thought that the book, uh, the book I read or article I read said that that house burnt down in less than a week after Randy disappeared. It was a few months. It wasn't very it was a long. Few was a few months. A few months, and fire marshal said it was arson. Yeah. He said that the gasoline had been poured down the hallways to the furnace room, okay. and it burned. And then the next day, caught fire again, burned to the ground. It was just a few months after. But Le uh, the Irwins had already moved out. They'd already left and moved back to Kansas City. We got so much I'm, daylight. I'm sorry. All, All right. right. All right. I'm, I really appreciate I, your help. I, I hope you guys find something. Appreciate I just yeah. really. Thank you for sharing. And I really, really hope it. Glad we stuck around to hear that little piece about the house burning down. Yeah, I'm not leaning towards an accident at this point. Yeah, it seems like way like some other stuff. And if it's and if we're not dealing with water, how are you going to get a car from Linwood over to Missouri if the if that story is true with the shredder involved, or is the car simply just you know hidden in the woods somewhere? Yeah. And we just need you know to invite. You know, you the viewers, start doing Google searches. Pull up Google Earth, Google Pro, and what can you find? Can you find this car? Right now the pond is fairly good size, but if we go back to 1991, the oldest satellite imagery, it definitely looks... It wasn't that big. Very small. So the pond itself didn't come up any further than this. No. So this, back in the 90s, was not here. This was just all dirt. This was not here. And so we're just searching this portion of it. Okay. I mean, if you found the car, I mean, but a car does have to go somewhere. I mean, a car just can't, you know, have to do something with the car. So we do find the car. Well, if you're dealing with like big affluent type people, mm -hmm. some somebody in that group probably has access to, to shredder. To, to shredder, yeah. No, totally. And crusher. Yeah. You can make the car disappear. Yeah. yeah Excavation yeah. equipment. Yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah. It's official. Another Third. one checked off the list. Yep, check. On to the next. Okay. Elizabeth had a thought. There's um, a couple of ponds out um, um, over on State Avenue, over east of Tonganoxie. And about a year or so ago, Harold and Alberta had uh, somebody come and talk to them about this young fellow was saying his grandfather was maybe involved with something years ago. He was involved, he said, in the mob, but he might have been involved with something that happened to Randy and that he had some property off of State Avenue there's two ponds there, and he said, check that back pond, and that's what he told Harold and Alberta. So Elizabeth had a thought that if Alberta and, and Elizabeth and I drive over and ask if we could get permission for you to come and check that pond. Okay, you know, sounds that good. that way we're not wasting time going down there if... Yeah, yeah, because I think we're like what, almost two o'clock, so yeah, we have you know three more hours of daylight today. So we'll go with him, and then we'll meet up with you guys in a bit. Okay. Thank you.
definitely a familiar spot. We have been here before. We came down the other side on uh, yesterday, which is in the other episode. So again, if you have not yet watched that episode, please go do so right now. If you're liking Adventures with Purpose and everything that we stand for, clean up the environment, helping you know, helping families find lost loved ones, do me a favor. A lot of people say, hey, Jared, how can we help? Hit that like button, hit the subscribe, leave a comment down below, and share these videos. If you can do anything more, we do have a membership available as well. PayPal links are down in the description as well. Any donations help because we are out here on our own dime to see what we can do to help these families and clean up the environment. So thank you. We cannot be doing this without you. So back to the show. We're gonna make our way through there, Dan. Yes, uh, watch the bottom of the plane. Can we make it? Easy. I didn't think we would. No, I don't know, it's shallow there. Oh. Oh. No, it's the bottom. <sighs> Burn it. Sharpening the prop? Yeah. Be us, Dan. Yeah, could be. So, what exactly is it we're looking for? So see where the uh, road comes in. It's 198. There's a story. This is Flanagan. This is where he ended up killing his girlfriend. Uh huh. And her oh. body was, I don't know. I don't have all the facts and all the details, but somewhere along the way, death occurred at this location, who also is the neighbor that was part of the party, Flanagan. And because of that, Harold would like it if we checked this location. Okay. But here's what we're up against now, Dan. We're up against, that. this is the end of the road here that we're currently at. Uh -huh. And back in, you know, 88, had somebody driven straight down this road, and the water was fairly low back in 88 as well. With that being the story in the case, if a car was driven off the end, the car would just be right here. Uh -huh. If the car was driven off and there was water here at the time, the car is gonna float for two to 10 minutes and it's just going to end up really no further down than that big brush pile down there. Let's say, you know, 300 yards. Based upon the flow of this, the water would not be rushing in here. So it's gonna be a nice, slow, current through here not like it would be out in the middle and so based upon that on how a car is going to float it's going to go kind of this direction and even maybe circle back in a little bit mm -hmm. there's nothing to scan here now that we've gotten up here you know everything is just within a few inches of a deep yeah so that one i'm going to say checks this location off as well dan Now we cleared that one off, and we have one more location. One location that has two ponds on it, that's my understanding. I think we're gonna be out of daylight today. Just for kicks, I know that we sonar down past the bridge yesterday. I'd like to just finish sonaring this, because some people believe that the car is going to go from the Stranger Creek Bridge all the way out to the river. In my professional opinion, it's not going to happen. But you know what, if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. Anyway, so as such, we're just gonna go ahead and do a quick uh, scan and sonar all the way between Kansas River and Upstream Creek back to the, to the uh, railroad bridge. You know, I'm gonna say, let's just clear this all over for 
that other bridge. Did we think for that yesterday? Okay. Does that work for you? Yeah, I'm on good. Yo, what's that? No, you have a steering wheel. You have a car right there. Let's go look at it. You have a you have a part of the car there. Let's come back to that. Let's clear the rest of the yeah, river right, right here. That steering wheel looks very. Yeah. We have an old car on the bank up here, tangled up in some trees. Why this location is so special, Dan, is because in the first episode that we did on this, we had some pictures, in fact, you can throw them up on screen here, of a psychic that was talking about go down to Stranger Creek at this specific location, and at that location, something is there. Like, I'm being drawn to that location. And when Harold took a couple days to make it down there, he waited for Alberta to go back to work. And when he came down to the location, written in the mud, it was like drier than it is now, it said Randy Leach was here. When Harold told me that story, like the hair on the back of my neck yeah. just stood up. The river was way lower than the two. Yeah. And, and it wasn't a psychic you know, from the area. You know, a psychic it was Florida. from Florida. Yeah. And we're in you know, the middle of Kansas right now. So when he came down here and saw that, like, very weird. And the bridge was redone since uh, 1988. You see, we were thinking, you know, he was coming from this direction over here. And if he would have come from that direction, there's just way too much distance for anything to have traveled, in our opinion, to have traveled through that little gully in order to get all of that through. Alright, well that clears everything up to the bridge. So let's head back down, Dan, and go check out that car. See if it's a, see if it's a Dodge by chance. Got it. I mean, that's a white pickup or something. 50s? 60s? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and this is all dumped with whatever concrete and debris that was up there, too. So it's not like it floated down here. Yeah, definitely not mom's car. I don't know what it is. All right, well, we found a vehicle. Yep. All right. Let's clear those ponds before it gets dark. get back here today with Alberta and you know we see this pond so when they were told they, the guy said it's the pond the, the pond in the back to search okay so when we get down here now we see this one okay so Wait, so you have three ponds in the back mm -hmm. so is it this one or is it that one well I say we're just running down daylight so let's just start We're showing one nine to the top of the poise, but then that's showing like this. Give you here, like hear my oh, motor. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. jammed up here. All right. We have something over here. I don't know what it is? But it's only. Yeah, I mean it's not a car. Oh, it's small. That is. Yeah, it's just the way the trees are laid. Sid, only one little mound. Oh, this pond is even 
even that big. No, we're... You can do this whole thing in two circles. Yeah, we're done real quick. Like, I, I don't feel like this was an accident at all. Yeah. I think that there's five or six people that are involved, minimum, that know what happened. Yeah. Somebody knows. All right, this one's clear. Yep. Clear and clear. <laughs> Let's do the last one. We're on the property. Let's clear it. Yeah, we're casting 77 feet wide still. No vegetation in here, so it's really easy to clear. How's it going, guys? You got a nice home here. We love you. Don't break it. Oh, I think we just broke it. We broke it. Betty, your thoughts at this moment in time? I'm so thankful for you guys uh -huh. and everything you guys have done and you guys have ruled out so many things that Marilyn and Bert have thought about and wondered about. Yeah, so, think... so it kind of solves a lot. Well, let's go talk to Alberta and Harold and yeah. go over some of these other uh, theories and then turn it over to the you know online community. I mean, we're going to open this up to you know several million that are going to be able to step in and help you out as well with some additional information we can give you in just a minute. Well, Larry and Betty, Elizabeth, Harold, and Alberta, we want to thank you, you know, for bringing us, bringing us in, into your home, you know, for feeding us breakfast and lunches and, and dinners. You know, the, today's journey took us to, you know, over to where the party was at. Uh, the gentleman, uh, we actually ended up getting in touch with Harry, who owns the property now, and he says that the water was not that there was no ponds on the property at the time. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we ended up not doing a search on his property. We did make our way to the north just a little bit. And with that one, we met the gentleman by the name of Bill. Harold, you've uh, spoken with him before and you uh, delivered your mail to him. Mm -hmm. yeah, the home was built you know, about 20 years ago. And so the reason why we went there is because the road that went to the west, you know, it was an old dirt road at the time that went down to a two and a half acre pond. And so we, you know, put the boat in there and we cleared that entire pond. So nothing was at that location. From there we made our way down to 198. At this point we tried to, to make oh, our way down there. We went down to Mark 10 Marks next. Marks next, okay. Mm -hmm. And with his, you know, we pulled up the aerial from 91 as far as the maps go back. And his pond was about half the size then as it is now. So we focused on the search on his property as well. We've also cleared his pond. From there, we made our way over to 198th, but the gate was closed. You know, no trespassing, a couple of dogs there. And so we ended up going back over to Stranger Creek, where the bridge used to be, at, you know, where Golden was. We put the boat in and we made our way all the way down Stranger Creek into the Kansas River, and then made our way up about a mile and a half, two miles to 198th. So, Harold, we have cleared 198 for you as well. Okay. With that one, uh, you know, the water was low, similar to how it would have been back in 88. And if a vehicle would have gone off the edge there, it would have pretty much just nosedive right into the sand there. Mm -hmm. Or to get out from the sand to the river at that point, it would have been another, you know, 100 feet or so. So with that, you know, a, a lighter current, because of the way that it does come around that corner, even if the car did end up there, you know, it would not make its way any down any more than about 100 yards. Even mm -hmm. if it was to float for, you know, you know, two to 10 minutes. I mean, we did look for about three, 400 yards down from where 198th did end. After that, we made our way back up into Stranger Creek. And we actually ran all of Stranger Creek, Creek all the way up to the bridge and beyond the bridge that you were sharing those photos with us. Yeah, you had a couple of uh, sections in there that were over 15 feet deep. And mm -hmm. and with this section of river, we actually ended up, we found a vehicle. 
Mm -hmm. um, the vehicle was not in the water. It was actually up on the hillside, so it, it had actually been pushed over from with some other debris, some concrete that it was mixed up in. And it was just a older pickup from, you know, I'm going to say, you know, the mid to late 60s is how old the pickup was. Mm -hmm. So even with the water being low, I think the shallowest we got into was about three feet, but the deepest down there right now is still, you know, 15, 15 16 foot. feet. Mm -hmm. So we can confidently say that there is no vehicle in Stranger Creek from that section down to the Kansas River. So, um, we then followed up on another lead that, I, I don't know how deep down this rabbit hole we want to go, but, you know, it's a gentleman that may have been involved with, you know, the drug portion of it and, you know, the mob back in the day and based on a family member that had spoken of his grandfather, we made our way onto their property as well, and we ended up clearing all three ponds on that property as well. So the the back prop, the back pond, I guess, was our number one target on that one, mm -hmm. and, yeah. we end, and we ended up clearing all of that. So that one ended up, we ended up clearing one, two, three, four, five, six, six. locations for you today. And so you rolled out the, the seven, you know, for the party was. So yes, yeah, because the party in the I guess back in the story goes that there was not a you know, water, water on the property at the time. As you know, I mean, there's a lot of stories around this, and you know, one is we thought that Flanagan's property was across the street. We did not realize that he had a driveway between the front house I shared the driveway. and yeah, and yeah, and the house where the party was at. We also had not heard until we were out there today that the house where the party was at actually burned down a, yeah. a month or two later and that there was no investigation done on Flanagan, there was no investigation done on the house burning down, the family had moved and uh, Sam has a, a, a list of notes that he made today and we'll kind of, he has some confidential informant on that one as well as some stuff that you know Betty would like to weigh in on as well. And we'll just kind of go down, you know, some of your thoughts and feelings on that one. Right now, my thought and feeling, before I turn this over to, you know, the two of them, is I don't feel like this is an accident at all. Like, we have cleared all bodies of water where an accident could have taken place. And at this point in time, I don't feel like it's an accident. I could be 100% wrong. But that's where I'm at on it. Um, this is where the corruption and everything else starts coming into all of this is I understand that you know Unsolved mysteries themselves came in and they were going to do a story on this, right. but they got zero cooperation From your law enforcement and they left We have others that have come in and have been driven out by your law enforcement We have new detectives as we understand have, who have come in to the office and the old that old outgoing detective have given them zero information like you don't need to worry about this case and now the way that the world is today is that you now have people around the world that are going to be stepping in on this to help the two of you out to try to get you those answers i mean some somewhere out there you know somebody knows what happened to randy you know and, and my feeling is I believe that there's at least five to six people right now that n they know exactly what happened to Randy that night. Again, I could be wrong, but my feeling is this was not an accident. So we'll do it. We'll do what we can to get the word out for you. Okay. What about the, uh, you were mentioning earlier how um, they said that they didn't have the, the diver dogs, but then you saw that the diver dogs were being used on a different case? No. Is uh, that right? We or? were told that, that they, they, they couldn't get, uh, they didn't have the diver dogs to help Harold Alberta search huh? for those dogs. <laughs> and then they got a call from their friend that um, they should come up to this area and there was something going on. But the guy was from Colorado. He was in Colorado, and he lived next door to where they found a skull. And the dog had carried the skull up, and the woman had it for a day or so, and then she didn't know what to do with it, so she asked this guy's wife, what should I do? And she said, call the sheriff. So she did, and then this guy was out in Colorado, and he called. 
people, well, we had another friend out there, and she called us and said, Alberta, you guys need to go up there and check that out. So we rushed up there just north of, west of Tonganoxie and pulled in the driveway, and there was cop cars, KBI, all over the place. And as we drove up, I just jumped out of the car, and the detective that works on our case came right over and he said, what are you doing here? And I said, we want to know what's going on. And he said, well, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It was a woman's skull. And if it had been, we'd have let you know. Mm -hmm. So Harold started to get out of the car, and he walked around to Harold, and he wanted to shake Harold's hand. And Harold said, I want to talk to the guy that's got the dogs. There was two cars, truckloads of dogs. So Harold walked over to the guy that had the dogs, and uh, he asked him about doing a search. And the guy said, well, we can't do anything without Leavenworth County okay in it. So we knew that was out. So we left. But then about two weeks later, the detective and a KBI agent was here. <clears throat> and I asked him, I said, did they ever find out whose skull that was? Well, yeah, but we can't say anything. But it was in the papers, I guess, but we didn't know. Yeah. But somehow the woman was at the bar and somehow she went out in the back and we don't know what happened. But, but the dog found the skull. Yeah, but, but they, they told you that they didn't have access to right. the dogs, and then all of a sudden here they have dogs but at their the dogs disposal. Was, yeah. came from After over telling right you over that we, we don't have dogs, but right. now all of a sudden they got dogs. But they came from right over in yeah. Missouri. We're, so, so we're already building you know, a lot of doubt within the police force here. Like, are they involved with a cover-up? You know, and, and part of the stories you know, today was, you know, we're dealing with the drug house. We're dealing with a, um, what we've heard was a shipment of drugs that were coming in that night. That the caves have been used for drug, you know, trafficking. That the, you know, that Flanagan also was one of the major players in the drugs. That, um, you know, there was a gal that, you know, Randy was, you know, interested in, Teresa. And with that one, that she was in the drug portion of it and that Randy was actually trying to, you know, hey, you know, there's a better life that you don't need to be involved in this. <laughs> oh, there's so much that the stories and the response that we didn't get. Uh, we had just replaced the car that was missing. And it was, we had ran over to Eudora. My brother lived over there, what, three, four miles? Mm -hmm. And we had spent the evening with them, and we came home at 10 o'clock and come in, and Harold went in, turned on the TV to listen to the news, and I asked him if he wanted a piece of chocolate cake. He said, sure. So I started back to the kitchen. Well, the phone was right there in the dining room, and it was ringing, and I answered it, and the neighbor over here said, Alberta, you got smoke coming down, clear down on the road. What's going on? And I ran through here and looked out, and the front tires on our car was just burning, just rolling fire up on the front. Oh, your, your, your parked car? The yeah. one we had just replaced, yeah. So somebody came and like, tried to light your car on fire? They had to. I'd say they poured gasoline on the tires. And Harold ran out and got the fire hose and was running on the house because we didn't have the cement on there. It was it, right here. It was right here. And uh, he was running water on the house so it wouldn't burn the house. And they finally got here, and uh, it smoked it up really bad. He called the fire marshal. Lemworth didn't seem to be too concerned about it. It took them. They eight, took eight, uh, weeks, eight weeks. Eight weeks to come out and check it. And the fire marshal was looking through it, and Harold asked him what what happened. He said, "Well, I think the gas line broke." Yeah. It was in March. The car only had. 16,000 miles Something on it, like that. Yeah. and it was cool, we just couldn't see the, and, and with the tires burning like that, we could not see the gas line just erupting. Oh yeah, no, I, I've never heard of such a thing never. ever in my entire never. life. So after that, well, Harold was talking to the guy, because the house over there had already burned, the party house. So Harold asked him, he said, did you investigate that? And he said, yeah. Harold said, well, what happened over there? He said there was gasoline poured down the hallway into the furnace room. I delivered the mail over there, and I saw the fire that day, and I called Harold and uh, told him there was a fire. 
and the fire department was there, and they were putting it out. That night, it started again and burned totally down. So, somebody did want that house there for some reason. Right. So, so you had a back-to-back -back nights on arson on that house. Right. Plus arson on your car. Other than that, there was just so many different things that went on through the years that uh, it, it's hard to even think about what all did go on. Well, well, we'll get we'll get this message out to everybody, and like I said, there's going to be several million. There's going to be new videos that will come out from it, and more investigations, and people are going to start. You know, we're going to invite you know the viewers here to jump onto Google Earth. You know, maybe the car's been sitting in you know off of a ravine or something that's it's somewhere between here and the party, or you know, expand the search. You know, go another 10, 15 miles out. You know, and see if we can find something. Um, you know, but that's that's you know the benefit of you know, social media these days, yeah. is that we've, we've now told your story. Your story is now out there for you. So we've done what we can for you on this one, you know. If there's any more waterways, you know, we're more than happy to come out, come back out and help sure. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have a dedicated Facebook page or anything that's set up for? And for Randy. For Randy. Betty keeps it up, yes. Yeah. So Betty, oh, yes, she keeps it. Oh, yes, she keeps it. She does. Okay, so we'll put the link in the description down below for that one, so that way, I mean, you're going to be flooded. I hope you can keep up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she does. So, so reach out with any tips, you know, without, you know, with any of your own theories, with any anything that you actually know. Like, somebody knows something out there. Yeah. That's all we need. Just let us know because, you know, yeah. time, time is not on our side. We yeah. sure tried to. And we've gotten. Yeah, we, we just need to know. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your food and your hospitality, and hey. you know, let us come in and do what we can to, you know, tell your story and get it out there for you. And, and I hope that, with all of this, that in short time, you're going to have the answers that you guys have been looking for. Be sure to so pray. Yeah. Hope so. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Of course. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I appreciate it. You never know how much. You're welcome.